ask the congregation to please stand for Vespers on page 229. Vespers on page 229. O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and singer psalm printed on the bulletin to the tune of age. for office hymn, hymn number 657.
Tonight's reading comes to us from Psalm chapter 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They will turn back in sudden disgrace. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the 1960s and the 1970s, the modern praise band in American Christianity, it began. Yes, in the 1960s and 70s, the modern praise band began in American Christianity. Now, this movement was inspired by more of a contemporary and informal approach to worship. These praise bands, they were incorporated to many church services, many worship services. And they often focused on evoking strong emotions such as joy and awe and happiness. And as far as the music that they sang, these praise bands often used themes and language from the Psalms. Now with that said, what I find very interesting is that nobody decided to create a lament band in the 1960s and 70s. Yes, a lament band. Now if you think about it, why not? According to one study of the Psalms, 59 chapters of the Psalms, approximately 150 Psalms in the book of Psalms, but 59 of the chapters of the Psalms are devoted to the theme of praise. Indeed, devoted to the theme of praise. 59. However, from the very same study, they found that 63 of the Psalms are devoted to the theme of lament, that is, sorrow. Yes, 63 psalms from the book of Psalms are devoted to bemoaning and hurt and sorrow and pain and weeping and crying. And so this begs the question, does it not? Indeed, it begs the question again. If the laments are just as prevalent in the book of Psalms, why not a lament band? Instead of smiles, perhaps, and Hawaiian shirts and upbeat songs, perhaps, the lament band could have musicians covered with ash wearing funeral clothing, and singing with sorrow. Now, in hearing this, you may think that I'm being a bit facetious, which I am, I'm being a bit witty, obviously, but in all seriousness, for theoretical purposes, why not? Why are we willing to sing about praise and not lament when they are both equally represented in the book of Psalms? Well, there may be a number of reasons why we don't have lament bands. I could think of probably 13 or 14 off the top of my head. 
I believe it all boils down to the simple fact, and that is this, that we do not like suffering. Let's be honest, we do not like suffering. We don't know what to do with our tears. We don't know how to maneuver in, in this struggle and pain and sorrow of life, especially in the Midwest. We have that stoic demeanor in all of us. And so it's just easier to ignore suffering altogether. It's easier to just stuff those feelings. It is easier to sing half of the Psalms, the joyful section, and avoid the painful section of the Psalms, those tearful parts. Here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, even though we would never have a praise band in the sanctuary, I do believe we are just like everyone else. Everyone else around us, we do not like suffering. We don't know what to do with our tears. We don't know how to maneuver through the struggles and the pains and the sorrow of life. And so tonight, and in the upcoming weeks here at St. Paul's for our Lent services on Wednesday nights, we will be focusing on suffering in the Psalms. When we are done, some of you may want to start a lament band. I doubt it, but we will have to see, obviously. Now tonight we focused on Psalm 6. Indeed, we focused on Psalm 6. It is a powerful expression of our human experience and suffering. We heard it tonight. In this psalm, David, he pleads with the Lord for his deliverance, for, for his anxiety, indeed for his deliverance from his anxiety and physical discomfort and his sickness. Listen to a paraphrase of David from Psalm 6. Oh Lord, please come. If you love me at all, get me out of here. I'm no good to you, dead. Am I? I can't sing in your choir if I'm buried in some tomb. I'm tired of all of this. I'm just so, so tired. My bed, my bed has been floating 40 days and nights on the flood of my tears. My mattress is soaked, soggy with tears. The very sockets of my eyes are black holes, nearly blind. I squint and I grope. David, he also said in our psalm, it's very subtle, but he does say this, that his bones were vexed and troubled. In other words, if you think about it, our bones as humans, they serve as kind of the, the framework, if you will, the strength of our bodies. Our skeletal structures, they can prop us up even when our muscles are weak and tired. However, in the case of David, it seems that his disease and this sorrel had penetrated to the firmest part of his body, down to his marrow, down to his nerves. David was afflicted and crushed. No part of David's body was not in anguish. So David is shaken by his physical health. No doubt about it. However, what is important to note in our psalm, Psalm 6 this evening, is that David's soul seems to be shaken just as much as his body. In other words, when the body suffers, the soul typically suffers with the body. I can remember as a young pastor, when I was a young pastor, just starting out, I remember going to the hospital down in Los Angeles for a young girl in her 20s who was dying of cancer. She was suffering terribly with pain as cancer ate away at her, and I was warned ahead of time by the senior pastor the difficulty of the physical pain. And so to a certain extent, I remember being prepared, kind of getting yourself psyched up and getting prepared for walking into that room. I was prepared for the physical struggling of this young woman. However, what I was not prepared for was the mental and spiritual pain that this young woman was going through. Not only was her body troubled, but her soul was troubled as well. And so, dear friends, amid physical suffering of the body, when the disease of life, when sickness get down into your bones, we must remember that the soul also suffers as well, and oftentimes even more. We must remember that the human person, that you as a human being, are body and soul together, not just body, your body and soul together. And so the human person needs not only the care of the body, obviously, but the care of the soul as well. When the strength slips out of your bones and disease sets in, you can feel the physical strength, I've been told, you can feel that physical strength leave your body, abandoning you in weakness. And then when the soul becomes vexed and troubled with pain and suffering, it might seem to one, the one suffering, that God has abandoned them as well. 
that they're all alone. One of the biggest failures of the medical community and I would add to that the church during COVID-19, a sin that we need to repent of is that we failed to recognize the importance of the soul. Sure, we attempted, sure, we attempted to protect the body from COVID-19 through societal distancing and lockdowns and so forth. However, there were numerous occasions where the medical community kept pastors from their parishioners, parishioners who needed pastoral care for their suffering souls. And the church, well, the church and her ministers were slow to challenge this. Again, the church and the medical community need to repent of this sin of failing to recognize the suffering of the soul. We must repent of our failure to not recognize, to not recognize the soul itself. To recognize that the suffering soul needs just as much as the body. That the soul needs pastors and friends and loved ones just as much as suffering bodies need the care of medical staff and professionals. Again, we live as body and soul together, not just mere bodies. Body and soul together. We live as body and soul and we suffer as body and soul together. And so with a suffering soul and a suffering body, David, he he cries out. David, he cries out. He says, how long, O Lord? How long? Now, there's a lot more to this simple cry than meets the eye. When we cry out, how long? Why, Lord? Or when when will this end, Lord? We're actually expressing, get this, anguish. We're boldly complaining. When we say, how long? Why, Lord? When will this end? We're expressing anguish of our soul. We're expressing anguish of our body. We're boldly complaining before the Lord about our gut-wrenching suffering. And the Lord, well... He doesn't hear these complaints of anguish as a nuisance by any means. Our wrestling with suffering before the Almighty God is not seen as another problem case that he has to open. And my goodness, I have to spend time with this one again. Said the Lord hears our prayers. He hears our hurts. He actually sees our suffering. Now, it is important to keep in mind that the Lord, based on his steadfast love, based on the steadfast love, he he sometimes grants you and me relief from our suffering. When that happens, God be praised. At other times, the Lord grants you and me grace through the suffering, and when that happens, God be praised. And sometimes the Lord grants you and me a blessed death out of our sufferings. Yes, a blessed death out of our suffering, and when that happens, God be praised. However, the one thing that the Lord God always does is to lead us to see our sufferings in light, get this, in light of the cross itself, the cross of Christ. In other words, David, as we heard tonight, David, he cried out to be delivered from death and the grave, from death itself and the grave. And the Lord heard this cry, and he answered David's cry through Christ's victory over death and the triumph over the grave. In other words, the Lord always answers our prayers and meets our suffering bodies and souls with the cross of Christ. But we may explain, exclaim, indeed we may explain, we may protest, we may struggle with this, and we say, I'm, I'm suffering. Where is God when I need him the most? Dear friends, God is where you need him the most, bleeding and dying on a cross for you. And that is the main point. The main point that we will be learning about with regard to the suffering during the season of Lent itself, well, we will often cry out, why is this happening? Where is God in my suffering? Where is God in my suffering? Both of these, unfortunately, do not see suffering quite fully and always quite rightly. You see, as a Christian, it is not your primary goal, it is not your primary objective to escape suffering or figure out the reason for the suffering itself, but rather... The primary objective is to understand that suffering in light of the cross. To hear the good news of the cross in the midst of that suffering. That is, whether you are suffering or whether you are not, you are to hear about the steadfast love of God, that you are all buried deeply in the wounds of Christ. All of your burdens buried deeply in the wounds of Christ. And so when you have anxiety, when you have physical discomfort and sickness, Your calling is not to be tough and to hold it in. Furthermore, your calling is not to freak out in utter despair, but instead to pour out your suffering cries unto the Lord himself. To 
pour it out. At the foot of the cross, you can share your fears. You can share your helplessness and pain with a listening God and a God who suffers, a God who suffers with you and for you through the cross of Christ. So that you may know that as good or as bad as it gets, nothing, get this, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ. Absolutely nothing. Neither life nor death, neither suffering nor prosperity. Where is God? He's in the middle of the suffering. He is right there in the middle of it with you and for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the antiphon. Congregation may be seated for the offering as a way of reminder. The offering plate is in the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed in the church office or conducted through the church website online.
This is for the Kyrie on 2.33. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world towards the glory of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have knit all the nations of the world into your one and holy church. Lead us ever more deeply into into the unity you desire for your people, that we may bear one another's burdens in prayer and in the works of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, help us earnestly to seek your blessings. Though it comes together with affliction, give us eyes to see through these trials which come from your hand, to the endurance, character, and hope they produce in your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. By patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Congregation may be seated for our closing hymn, hymn number 615.
The Lord bless and keep you this Lent season as we learn to suffer in the shadow of the cross, always remembering that cross in the midst of all the suffering that this world, this life, the devil bring unto us. You have Christ, he has you. Rest in that grace. Amen.